Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today, I'm looking at battery leads. So I went to a well-known uh, car accessory shop over here in the UK, and I went to buy some battery leads, thinking it would be easy to buy them, they'll be ready-made, it'll be nice and simple. This is actually what I found. Now, these are, I suppose, battery leads of a, of a foam. This particular one is 11 inches long, and as you can see, it's not very thick at all. Um, as a battery lead goes, I would reckon this would be pretty much useless. So I wouldn't recommend using those. So we'll get rid of that. Now, on talking to a mate of mine, uh, with regards to finding out anywhere that sold decent sized battery leads, he suggested, which was a really good suggestion, and Mick, I know you'll be watching this. Well done, brilliant suggestion. Thank you very much for that. He suggested jump leads. Now, my jump leads are like this. Now, these are a lot thicker, a lot more substantial, as you can see, and they also have a decent pair of clamps on them for getting them onto the batteries. Now, these are absolutely brilliant for jump starting a car, any car, any size engine. These are brilliant. But this cable is probably going to be something of this thickness is probably going to be overkill on my particular application. So, what his actual suggestion was, was buy a set of jump leads, which I did, brand new set. Now these are a brand new set of jump leads, you can find these in most places. Now these are a lot thicker than the first one that I bought from that well-known accessory shop. So these will be just the job for what we want. Now Mick's original suggestion was, buy a set of jump leads and just cut them to length and use however much you wanted off them. So I went out, I bought these, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to dismantle them because the actual clamps do come off. So you can take the clamps off and then you can just use them for whatever you want to or put them straight in the bin. Might be worth keeping around though. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to dismantle these, get the cable out. And so the easiest way to do it is first of all, check which side it's hinging on. Now on this particular one, I don't know if you, can, you probably can't see in the camera, but it's this one that does the hinging. So if you take a screwdriver, just an old flat bladed screwdriver, slide it up underneath there and just give it a twist. And then you'll feel this side of the handle move. On the other side, do the exact same thing. So you get the screwdriver worked into it. And then just twist when you get in there. Take that out and then you can just slide that out from there. Take the spring out as well. Now inside the clamp, there's obviously there's your copper, your copper cable, your copper connection, which as you can see there. Now with your screwdriver, you can just slide underneath there and just gently, if you can see this on camera, just slide that under there and gently lever it and it will just pop off. It's just pressed on to a little bracket inside. And I've got one of these as well. It's like a, a trim removal tool. Now you can get that underneath and then just leave it up a little bit and that will pop off there and then you just take that out and that's a little copper extension and they're quite substantial. The bracket handle to one side and then on the other cable, on the other side of the clamp, take the screwdriver, lift the cable out, take the cable out of the way, slide your screwdriver up underneath there and you get all up to the top. And you can get right through and then just give that a twist hopefully you'll be able to see this on camera just give that a twist that pops out as well get rid of your handle and then you get this when it all comes out Got that. you can cut this cable to whatever length you need to cut it to and also if you do need to take the end off or if you prefer to take the end off obviously with your screwdriver on this side it would just simply be a case of opening up these sections here and then taking this copper end piece off altogether, and you'd be able to replace it with one of these, which is a standard battery clamp, uh, a boiler battery terminal that you can get from anywhere. And you'll just slide that over the wires, obviously clamp it in place, solder it into place, and then wrap a bit of tape around or put a bit of shrink wrap around to take it up to the end, and then that'll go straight on to the bolt. So hopefully that's uh, giving you a bit of an indication as to something that's going to be a better idea for you than battery leads because of course you can buy jump leads 
in a variety of sizes, a variety of amp ratings. This particular set is rated to 220 amps, which will be perfectly usable for my application. If, however, you have a bigger application and you need something that's rated at higher amperage, just look around for a set of jump leads with the higher amperage. Uh, the engine in my truck is a 351 Cleveland, so these will be perfect for that. They're actually pretty much exactly the same size as the battery leads that are on there now, so they'll be more than adequate for my needs. Again, thanks to Mick for that top tip of using jump leads as battery leads. Uh, it'll give you all the power that you need and uh, that, that set of jump leads that I got I actually paid less for that set of jump leads than I paid for that battery lead. There. <laughs>